Hello and welcome to episode three of my new podcast, Tom Slips Into Conversation With. Uh, on this week's episode, I have Bex uh, from Shop Daisy and Dime on Instagram. Uh, we're on a little dog walk uh, with my girlfriend Joy and dog friend Mocker. Uh, we're over at Coombe Abbey because it's the kind of furthest away point that we can really get to in lockdown. Um, and it's just a really nice walk and it's on a Thursday, so we're able to... Uh, there's no one around, which is really cool. On this week's episode, we talk a little bit about uh, Bex uh, studying de dental tech, how making a pattern uh, grew her page, about mental health, how slow fashion is better than fast fashion, our hobbies. But through this conversation, I started getting a little bit more confident. Um, I'm feeling a bit more confident about writing my own patterns, so it's something I'm trying to work on a little bit more through this conversation. If you'd like to see uh, another interview that Bex did, uh, talking a little bit more about kind of mental health and um, writing your own patterns and stuff, uh, definitely go and check out Calm Homemade um, because they did a, a live chat fairly recently as well. And the conversation starts with me asking her how she's doing. At the end of the episode, I'll be back with a little bit more chat and a little bit of footage of our dog walk. Um, but enjoy the episode. Uh, I'm good. I, I'm all right. I'm currently on winter break, so um, definitely been sleeping in quite a bit. Um, so I had to get up quite early, actually, for uh, for today. What's, that's right. what's quite early for you? Um, like nine o'clock right now, <laughs> which is like super embarrassing. Yeah, nine o'clock would be a massive lion for us. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little, uh, my schedule's a little topsy-turvy because, uh, like I said, I'm on winter break, so uh, in a couple of days I'll be back to being a student, waking up at six in the morning, so. <laughs> yeah, you might as well make the most of it. Well, that's yeah. probably a, a good place to kind of start, is like, um, so you're a, a full-time student? Yeah, a full-time student, yeah. What are you studying? Uh, I study dental technology, um, so I'm basically the person, like, if you need um, orthodontic appliances, like retainers or like night guards or dentures, crowns, implants, that kind of stuff, I'm the person in the lab who will be making it. Um, That's cool. So it's it's really interesting. It's um it's quite <clears throat> it's quite um I guess niche you could say. Um, it's not a lot of people who do it. Um, I didn't even know that it was a career up until I applied for the program actually. Um, but it's really neat because it's kind of this um, like perfect trifecta of like, um, you know, obviously it has to do with like health sciences um, and it's very like meticulous, um, very precise, but it's also quite um, artistic as well, especially when you're doing things like, you know, making teeth or making dentures, you know, you do have kind of some I guess like artistic free will um yeah I guess it's like a almost like a type of craft in a way but it's like a practical craft yeah yeah almost actually um a lot of the techniques that we use are really similar to um, creating jewelry um like we cast a lot of metal we work with wires um a lot of the techniques are like I said they're very very similar to um what a lot of jewelers do. Um, ours is just kind of a bit more practical and we have to be a little bit more precise, obviously, because if you don't, you know, if you have a denture that doesn't fit, that doesn't fit, you could really hurt your patient. But yeah. Um, really, really cool stuff. Nice. That's cool. So did you just kind of so you didn't really have a plan on doing dental work at all? Or is it you wanted to go into dentistry, but uh so actually um I was working in a completely different field um, before going back to school. Um, I have a degree in uh, culinary management for nutrition. So I was working in the restaurant industry for, for quite some time. Um, and it just, it wasn't for me <laughs> at all. Like I, I love to cook, I love food, I love nutrition, but it, the, the scene really just wasn't for me. Um, and I was talking with one of my friends who was a dental hygienist, um, at, cause I was originally looking into being a hygienist because she said I would kind of like that because um, mm -hmm. I, I really love to work with my hands uh, yep. and I've always loved kind of like healthcare and you know anything to do with like the human body uh, like as even as a kid and stuff and so I was asking her about dental hygiene and she was like well have you heard of dental tech instead like you might like it a lot better because 
you know, it's, it's way more hands-on and you get the added benefit that you're not working inside of people's mouths, you know, yeah. it's, you don't, the gross factor is kind of removed from it. And yeah. You don't have like, to oh, interact you know. with people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, you know, like that, that's actually, that actually sounds quite interesting. And so I, I looked into it and, uh, um, one of the local colleges here in Toronto, they offered the program. Um, like I said, it's kind of a very niche job, so not too many um, colleges offer it. And, um, so I, I took the opportunity and uh, I went back to school for it last year and uh, it's been it's been awesome. That's awesome. How long's the program for? Uh, it's three years and then I have to write my licensing exam. Okay. And then you'll yeah. hopefully get, will you get placements as well? So do you get to like... Yeah. Yeah, so next year we have, um, for a semester, we do a, uh, like a clinical placement. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be working with a lab with people kind of doing like, a, like an internship type thing. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Definitely very different from crochet, but. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, definitely a bit different. <laughs> but then I guess you're still kind of creating something. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For nice. sure. Really neat stuff. Yeah. How did, how did you get into crochet? Uh, my grandma's, which uh, I think is probably like the second most common way of getting into it, aside from like teaching yourself on the internet. Yep, um, I think that's probably one of the most common ways. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've yeah, heard so far. Of, yeah, yeah. A lot of people say, uh, "Oh, I'm I'm self-taught." You know, I learned on YouTube. I, you know, um, but no, my my grandma's, um, my my bubby and my yaya. Um, I'm half Czech, half Greek, so I call them by their. <laughs> that's really cute uh, yeah um so I was maybe around like five or six years old and uh my my bubby uh she taught me kind of the basics I remember she would teach me like I don't know if you know finger crocheting or like you just use like your fingers and your hands I think I've heard of it but I've the crochet <laughs> world is quite different from, from me. yeah I guess I guess you do a lot more knitting than you do um crocheting yeah I dabbled in um, crochet but I'm um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay with knitting, to be honest. <laughs> That's funny. I'm, I'm the complete opposite from you. Um, but yeah, they, they taught me to, um, to finger crochet first. And then uh, from there, it was crocheting. And they also taught me knitting and sewing and embroidery and, and all of that. Um, I have two sisters, and they tried teaching them as well. But uh, they didn't really take to it uh, as much as I did. No. Um, yeah, no, my... My, my sisters couldn't really get into it too much. Um, but yeah, that's that's where I learned. And uh, yeah, it's kind of just taken off ever since then. Like I've, I've always crocheted pretty much since then. That's cool. Yeah. So did you have like a, a cause I've, I think I've followed your page for a while and it like every time I see it, it like it seems to explode. Like, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is like super it's been like a really crazy year honestly um like I said since I'm since I'm a student I don't really have so much time to be working on it but then you know as we know in March when the pandemic got really bad everything shut down I was kind of mm -hmm. stuck at home and I was like okay well you know I'm not really doing anything you might as well just kind of crochet a bit and I had a couple people asking if I could like start writing some patterns and I was like, ah, sure. I'll like write one or two. And then, uh, I wrote my buttercup top pattern and I guess people really liked it because yeah. out of nowhere I got like 10,000 followers, like just literally randomly out of the blue. And it was, it was like totally crazy. I uh, like never would have expected, um, you know, my following to grow that much in such a short amount of time. Um, and it ended up growing to a point where, um, it kind of became my full-time job, uh, mm. until, until I had to go back to school pretty much. Um, so, so it was kind of nice. It was uh, like completely would not have expected that to ever happen. Um, but definitely really thankful that it did. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really cool. Like, uh, it, it seems like you've kind of developed your style as well. Like you've, yeah. you've been able to work on a lot of stuff, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I definitely agree that kind of over the over the years, and especially through 2020, um, my, I guess, crocheting style, like you said, it definitely kind of has evolved into its own kind of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. I kind of feel like I have sort of my like, signature style, <laughs> if you will. 
Um, yeah, I feel like if you uh, had a few photos of different crochet wear, you could probably pick your stuff out. Oh, because, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> because you've got like a, you've got your kind of style and kind of color palette mm-hmm. and stuff. So, yeah. Do you do you like writing patterns? Um. Yeah, actually, it's it's a lot of fun. It was definitely a new skill for me to learn and quite quite a big learning curve, I would say, as well. Um, but it's it's definitely been a lot of fun. I I, I really enjoy writing patterns. Um, and it's also like it's really nice that I'm kind of able to kind of contribute, like give something kind of back to the community um, where I can, you know, I can kind of help teach people to crochet in a way like you know obviously like I don't have like beginner courses or anything you know Mm. yet (laughs) yeah but you know it is really nice that um you know I can kind of show people like hey here's this design you know maybe if you can't you know buy it like you know already made I can at least kind of show you how to make it and then you get to learn a skill and I I think it's kind of nice that I'm I guess in a way sort of helping to preserve the art of crochet or like kind of get people inspired to get into it because um I I would kind of argue like it it definitely is making a making a huge comeback right now sorry my cat just jumped on the table that's fine Um, (laughs) it, it it is making a comeback like I would say all kind of fiber arts are but um for a while you know I think like crocheting and knitting like they were kind of like a like a dying craft almost like not too many people really used it and um I feel like it was kind of associated a lot with like you know being like a grandma craft not a lot of young people were into it but now I kind of feel the tide is turning and uh I kind of like that by writing patterns I can maybe inspire some people to try out the craft for themselves Um, because I also think it's quite intimidating learning a new craft I mean even like with knitting you know um like I'm trying to teach myself knitting again (laughs) Yeah, and I'm like reading all of these patterns and stuff, and I'm like, this is literally gibberish to me. <laughs> and it can yeah. be, it can be so so discouraging. But um, you know, I think I think it's nice to be able to kind of help people get over that initial hump of being a little nervous to start a craft, and you know. Yeah, for sure. I I completely agree with you. I definitely think um, like our kind of parents' generation. I think like my mum knew how to knit and I think she tried to teach me when I was younger but I don't really remember that but there definitely has been a surge of like younger people kind of our generation that want to start doing mm-hmm. craft and um I think it's also for me and I've spoken to a lot of other people as well that it's kind of helped as like almost like a meditation and it's kind of yeah. like a kind of form of therapy yeah uh, like definitely. a physical kind of therapy so I think our generation as well is they're a lot more clued up about mental health and things to Mm -hmm. try and help. And I think crafting, which is to be honest, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast is try and help inspire more people. Cause like the UK and I think Canada's now in another lockdown as well. Yeah. So a lot of people are going to have more time on their hands and trying to deal with that stress, crafting, crochet, knitting, uh, all that stuff can really help. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's such a huge movement to kind of like the mindful, um, like the mindfulness and like the therapeutic side of like crafting and fiber arts and crochet and knitting. Um, and, and a lot of people are really touching on it. Like um, uh, Abby from uh, Calm Homemade. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure you follow her. Um, but yeah, her, yeah. her entire um, Instagram page is, it's basically dedicated to like using crochet and, you know, other fiber arts as basically like a way to kind of <laughs> keep calm. <laughs> And, yeah exactly you yeah. know just to, to stay mindful and you know I think there's so much merit to that because um it is it is quite meditative and especially when you're making big projects like you know like sweaters or dresses or blankets or something you know it's it's just kind of nice to only focus on you know the stitches that you have to do and like nothing else and I think there's also something so gratifying to be able to like look at something and be like sorry cat that's why <laughs> <laughs> um I think there's something very gratifying to be able to say like I made this to like look at something and sorry okay That's fine. you gotta go <sighs> he's a curious boy <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah just just to be able to say you know like I I did this I made this and like there is 
you know, there's so much satisfaction that comes with that. And like, and especially, you know, when we're, when we're stuck in lockdown and, you know, maybe there's not so much to do, or, you know, maybe you're laid off or, you know, you can't continue with school, um, you know, just to have something that like a kind of, you know, takes up your time and B kind of makes you feel like you're being productive. I feel like that's, that's very nice to have. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 I, I started it as um, a way to kind of keep my mind calm and then like nowadays with like lockdown I like I I feel guilty just watching tv by itself so yeah. having a project to like be productive mm-hmm. on I feel like yeah I can, I can watch tv and not feel guilty about it because I'm like I'm being productive at the same time um and my girlfriend's been working from home like most of lockdown there was a bit where she because lockdown went for so long they had to furlough her for a bit but while she's working, it kind of gives me a project to work on rather than just like sitting and just watching TV. Yeah. I feel like, just, yeah, I, for sure. I just like being productive. So that's why I quite like doing crafts. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And I think another reason why it's getting um, like why crochet and knitting and kind of just crafting in general has gotten such a resurgence is I feel that there is a big push for um, sustainably made clothes. Um, or like sustainably made like anything pretty much. Um, I know clothing is a really big one though right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, and kind of like that big push for slow fashion because I, th- I think it's becoming quite apparent that um, fast fashion is kind of, you know, it's, it's the devil <laughs> almost. It's doing um, a lot of damage to the planet really, isn't it? So Yeah, I, so. I believe it's like this, the number if not one, then definitely the second largest contributor of, you know, greenhouse gases and environmental pollution and everything. And yeah, probably um, it's, it's definitely going to be up there if it's not the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really terrible. And, you know, just, just the sheer amount of, you know, waste that comes with, you know, having 52 seasons worth of clothing in a year, you know, that companies are pushing to, you know, create, and then they, you know, you wear it for a week and then it's done and you throw it in the landfill. Just like it's, it's, it's so appalling. And I think people are finally deciding that they, you know, enough is enough. And um, I think that's kind of another big push why people want to get into fitting and crocheting is because they want to be able to make things for themselves. Yeah. And make it unique. Things that'll last. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's another really big one. Yeah. You can change Mm -hmm. the style and the color and loads of things if you, if you make it yourself, but if you have enough knowledge to change the style, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's probably being able to customize um, garments is definitely probably my favorite thing about making items is like you get to make something that not only fits you perfectly, but it's, you know, it's completely unique and like, no, there is not going to be a duplicate of it anywhere else in the world. You know, even if you follow a pattern, you know, exactly the same, it's still going to look a little different, you know, like you can have 20 knitters and they're going to make the same pattern but it's going to look you know 20 different ways yeah exactly and each of them might want to tweak it just a little bit to make it fit them a little bit better as well so yeah yeah what what kind of thing do you prefer to crochet then what what's your favorite item of clothing to make probably bikinis (laughs) um I, i really enjoy making bikinis um that's actually how i started out how i started my business off um I was a swimwear brand and I really wanted to focus on bikinis and swimwear because um, like we had just touched on, like they're, it's so customizable to your body. And um, I'm not sure how the experience um, as as a man is when it comes to buying swimwear, but as a woman, it's almost a little, it can be a little like degrading (laughs) sometimes. Um, Yeah, because you've got to fit into a a certain body type that someone has decided but yeah. if you're making it, you can make it fit your body type. So yeah, I, yeah. As a guy, I don't have that as much, but I, I can I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like that. That's kind of the whole reason why I why I got into crocheting bikinis was it was almost um it was kind of like a therapeutic way for me to like feel good in my own body um by making something that fit me perfectly and fit me exactly how I wanted it um. And I, I really felt good, you know, with what I was making. And I had made a couple for my friends and um, they they did push me 
to, to opening up a shop, they were like, you know, you should, you should really do something like this because I think you could help a lot of people out. Um, so for a while it was custom swimwear that I was working on. Um, and kind of over the, over the years and as time has passed, I've kind of gotten into making, you know, like tops and sweaters and stuff, but bikinis are like, definitely like, they're like my absolute favorite to make. That's where it started. So that's, that's yeah. where you, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I've noticed like, that you've, you've started making a lot more jumpers and kind of tops yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Especially, um, especially this year. Um, I, I don't know what really got me into it. I just, I just had a really big push to start making a lot more um, like sweaters and cardigans. And It could be just, just trying to be nice and cozy at home, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, yeah probably is it to be honest yeah do you do you follow many patterns or do you now just kind of just work on your own stuff or how how do you Um, normally work I actually I can't think of the last time I like straight up followed a pattern um oh my god (laughs) I would say most of the time it's usually me like freehanding something um if I do end up following a pattern I'm probably changing it a million times over by the time you know by the time it's done um the the way that I learned to crochet is my my grandmas they taught me like just a bunch of stitches Mm -hmm. and then they kind of taught me like basic shapes to make things in order to get certain fits um and so I've kind of just always crocheted like that where like I'll have like, okay, I want to do like a top down, like raglan style jumper and I want it to be in like the linen stitch. And so like, I'll make it like that. Um, and that's kind of how I tend to operate. I don't usually use a lot of patterns. Um, yeah, yeah, like I, think- I, there are so many talented pattern pattern makers out there though. Like I definitely, I definitely want to be trying more of them out. Um, I, I would say you're probably up there though with the talented pattern makers. Oh, thank you. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, you. I'm kind of the same. I, I kind of try to learn the basics. I'm not very good at reading. Like I've tried some of the one of the gang patterns um, because they're very simple to read. Um, yeah but then I've also like my mum gave me a book of knitting projects and stuff oh yeah and they were just really complicated on how they were mm-hmm. they were written and like I'm not yeah. a big fan of all the shorthand stuff so I just kind of learn oh, the basics okay. and just yeah from that I kind of know roughly what I'm doing it's just a lot of counting and a bit mm-hmm. of maths <clears throat> yeah well I actually I find that that is kind of um I feel like learning the fundamentals is kind of the more beneficial way of learning because, um, and and like, this is, this is nothing against um, pattern makers um, or companies who write their patterns this way, but when they just kind of write, you know, like knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one until, you know, your pieces, you know, whatever, like they're just kind of giving numbers. It's kind of hard for me to visualize like, okay, like what is the big picture? Like how am I shaping this, you know, sleeve or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, what stitch am I doing? Like, how do I, you know, you know, what is, what is the repetition or like the, the actual pattern involved when you're creating, you know, this type of stitch. Um, so I kind of find like learning it in the way that's like, um, learning like the stitches first and then learning how to like increase and decrease them in order to shape pieces and then learning, you know why you shape pieces the way that you do in order to achieve a certain fit I feel like that's kind of almost like I said it's the more beneficial way to learn because I feel like you're kind of learning the actual skill rather than just following the pattern and then you can transfer those skills into other garments that you make or other projects um, that you want to create yeah that Um, I think that yeah that makes sense yeah (laughs) and like I said like I'm totally totally not knocking anybody who um who enjoys either writing or reading patterns um in in the other way that i had described um just for me personally i like to kind of like know exactly what i'm doing why i'm doing it how i can apply it to other scenarios um and like i said i think that might just be with the way that i had learned um Mm -hmm. crocheting is just just the way that my grandma's taught me um i think from what i've kind of seen and what i've heard is that that seems to be the the more modern way of doing it like people i think people are more like interested in 
well the pe- at least the people i've spoken to are more interested in creating their own stuff and have learned the fundamentals i think that's definitely the way that um pattern writing is kind of going like the the uh direction that it's going because uh i look i look at uh, my, my grandma actually gave me this massive stack I, I wish i could show you actually but i'm sure i'll lose connection because my internet connection in my crochet room is terrible um but she gave me this massive, like super fat stack of um, uh, like vintage knitting and crochet magazines at like, <laughs> okay, first off, like all of them are in check. So like, I can't even read them, but like <laughs> the instructions for each row is literally like three words. I'm like, that's it. And I'm like, how do you learn anything from this? <laughs> like, I would be so confused. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, you just, you just follow the instructions. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this makes no sense. <laughs> Yeah, my mum um, uh, dropped off a book of true 80s kind of style yeah. jumpers. And I'm like, oh, those are the best. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll ever make them. But I, I feel like that style is starting to come back. But it's like mm-hmm. jumpers that you would see on like proper 90s kind of or 80s kind of TV shows. Like, Yeah, so they're very, very, very like, colorful. Yeah, very <clears throat> and colorful. Lots of and very, yeah, very like intricate <clears throat> as well, I feel. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of different like stitches and patterns, and some really interesting silhouettes from that era as well. You know, with like mm. the puffy sleeves and, and all of that. Yeah, the puffy sleeves yeah. are definitely like they've definitely made a comeback. I feel like. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any other hobbies, or is like I guess with you being a student, crochet is probably one of your main. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, crochet has kind of like taken over my life. Um, in terms of hobbies. I would say if I had more free time, I would probably be spending it um, playing video games. Um, my 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 boyfriend and kind of like my whole friend group, we all we all really like to play games. Um, definitely don't have as much time for it as I would like to. Um, but another another really big hobby of mine is um, uh, playing music. Um, I played piano. I've, well, I've played piano pretty much for as long as I've crocheted so since I was six years old um I also play guitar as well uh and I sing but I'm not <laughs> very good at it I'm not gonna make you <laughs> sing on that. don't worry <laughs> um but yeah I, I've always grown up around music um everybody in my family plays plays music so I, I grew up around it and I've, I've always loved playing piano um don't have a piano anymore though uh since i moved into um well since i moved out of my parents house um, which is a little sad but hopefully one day i'll get a keyboard or something yeah a big a proper piano is is quite an investment and <laughs> yeah s- size to put somewhere really isn't it oh for sure and it's it's just a little difficult you know having it in an apartment mm-hmm. um <laughs> so I guess yeah I'll at least a for... keyboard you can kind of plug in and... yeah yeah. change the volume <laughs> pianos yeah. are a little a little loud i don't think the neighbors would appreciate it too much um, it depends on how well you play i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah been a while, and a and at what time if you're playing really nice piano at really late at night i don't think they'll, they'll, they'll yeah, appreciate no. it <laughs> no i don't think they would like that too much um yeah but those are kind of like my other other big hobbies i would say um when, when I have the time to it's obviously it's a little hard sometimes um balancing it with school um yeah yeah do you would you like the crochet kind of to be a full-time job or are you happy as it is like a little kind of passion project um <laughs> I think it would be really awesome if it if it ever could kind of blow up to the point where um where I could maintain um living my life having crochet as a full-time job um as of right now i kind of like that it's a bit of a passion project um i don't know because like dental dental is so cool as well um it's like really really interesting and like even though i never really thought that i would ever kind of get into that field um it's it's just like it's so I feel like it's like f- just for me um that's really cool just hearing you talking about you doing like studying it you sound like you you're really into it so yeah like it's it, it's just like totally unlike any other job or career um 
you know, I, I've ever even heard of. But then again, like crochet is like that as well. Like, you know, waking up and like writing patterns every day or, you know, creating like garments or, you know, maybe like fingers crossed working with like companies or something like that, that is so out of what I thought, you know, a, a career could be. Mm. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard. And, and honestly, I kind of feel like, you know, being a full-time student and then knowing that I'm going to get into, um, you know, dental as a full-time job, but then also having what I would say is like a relatively successful brand. Um, yeah, I would say like, in, <laughs> especially in like the kind of crafting community, I think like the number that you've yeah. got, I think are quite high and I think you get quite good inter like, yeah, you have very good interaction <laughs> and stuff. Oh, so, thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I just kind of feel like sometimes it's a little hard to, hard to balance both. Um, I guess what I would want for a career would just be like stability, <laughs> which is yeah. sometimes a little, a little difficult sometimes with crochet. Cause you know, you're kind of only making as much money as, you know, what you're putting into the business. So if you have a really busy month and you kind of can't get to meeting your deadlines, which, which has happened to me before, um, you definitely take a bit of a hit there. Um, whereas, you know, you, you go into your everyday job and you make a certain amount of money every day. Yeah. And... You've got a paycheck at the end of the month, which is, yeah. 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 yeah but, being you know, self-employed is, yeah. Being self-employed is, is hard work. So, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But it's, it's obviously, it's not all about the money as well. And mm. definitely whatever, whatever career I end up in, I, I just want to be happy in it. <laughs> That's all. So whether it's Lovely. dental or crochet. Yeah. Nice. I feel like crochet is something that you'll be able to like pick up at any time as well. Like just keep it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, well, that's, so. yeah. That's the other nice thing about being self-employed is, you know, you can kind of choose your workload. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, when you, when you start working with other people um, and you actually have like proper deadlines that you need to meet, you know, maybe not so much then, but if, if, you know, if you kind of keep at it as kind of more of like a, I don't want to say like a hobby um, because with the amount of work that you put in when you're self-employed, like it, it is a job. <laughs> it is yeah, a full-time sure. job and it is an overtime full-time job at that, I would say. Um, but the nice thing is, is like, like you said, you can kind of pick up and pick up whenever you want. You can kind of take time off when you need. Um, it's a lot kind of more flexible to your needs um, rather than someone else's. So it would be really cool to have it as a career, but that is like a, like a, in my dreams <laughs> type thing. Like, yeah, I feel um, I feel like turning it into a career would be amazing, but also might take some of the fun out of it for me. Yeah. But yeah. I, I guess it depends on I mean, you're you you could write your patterns. Like mm -hmm. that's something I kind of want to get into. <laughs> oh, you totally but, should. Yeah, I've i I make I make notes, but the problem is I like I make notes, I make quite good notes at the beginning of a project and then and then, <laughs> and then it, it like nothing for the center of it and then at the end yeah. i'll make very loose notes and i have to like try yeah. and work it all out again so yeah. it's just it's just practice and consistency and i think it's something i mean after i've done this first season of this podcast that i want to record and edit mm -hmm. i want to look at writing patterns because a lot of people i've had a lot of people ask me and it's something that i've i do want to do because a lot of my a lot of my audience are crafters themselves so mm -hmm like I don't really sell much of my stuff because I think if I had a pattern more people would like buy it because they would want to make it themselves rather than buy it yeah. pre-made mm -hmm. yeah I I've definitely noticed that is uh, the patterns are definitely um they definitely bring a lot more people in than I would say the finished products um yeah. and I would say that that is probably a reason why my account grew so much and so quickly the way that it did is because i started offering patterns um yeah, yeah but you should definitely give pattern writing a try maybe maybe i'll try out some knitting from you yeah i'll, I'll give it a go <laughs> i've got like a couple of simple things and then yeah i just i just need to like kind of i've got loads of ideas and i've got mm -hmm. things i want to do but it's just it's just trying to find the time 
like I yeah. keep uh, like I normally have like a good three or four patterns uh, not yeah. patterns, three or four like projects kind of on the go and that's I'm not even same. including work uh, so yeah no. <laughs> yeah no definitely a lot and I think uh I think a lot of people underestimate how much work goes into pattern writing um like you said like um you mentioned you you take notes um while you're working on it mm. and you know you get kind of halfway through and then maybe you kind of forget to write something down or um yep. so when you're pattern writing like you have to be so diligent well I mean like this is just the way that I write patterns um and my dream like, I'm pretty fairly new to it I would say like I only have I think maybe like eight or nine patterns out um but I feel like if you do not write down and photograph like every single step with every single note just like all hell breaks loose and you just end up confusing yourself and then like, like I don't even write my patterns like with like graded sizes um I just kind of write them as like you measure yourself and like that's the amount of stitches that you make and you go for as long as you need the length to be and yeah, I think that's how I want to write it is like you have to do some maths. Like the person who is going to do it, yeah. you need to do a little bit of work because I, the idea of like writing like a small, medium, and large oh my that God. already, already <laughs> blows my mind. Up. So, yeah, um, yeah it's something yeah. I, I will try and get into. I, I think the other the, the other thing I really get stuck on is like I've started writing the patterns and stuff on my phone, which is good because it's mm -hmm. just like a simple note. But when I come to actually, yeah. like, I've got halfway through trying to design a pattern, but I get so caught up in the, like, the the aesthetic on how it wants to look and then the, like, the yeah. flow of the page, I just kind of lose all interest in actually writing down the pattern. I just want to make it look really nice. Yeah. Which, that's, yeah. that's the last job, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely um, trying to fit, like, aesthetics into a very, like, technical and practical pattern with you know a bunch of abbreviations that look like gibberish um it's definitely yeah. kind of difficult and honestly like well, my patterns are like the furthest thing like in terms of like the format and the layout they're like the furthest thing from aesthetic like it, it's actually kind of like sad and I need to fix it like to ASAP yeah it drives me nuts but but like formatting like again like that's like a whole new like a you know, as simple as it is, like it is kind of a whole new skill set that you need to learn and you know, learning even just like photography and stuff like there, there's so much work that goes into writing patterns, mm -hmm. you know, from from the designing to, to the grading, if you do it with different sizes, um, to, you know, doing the test fits and making sure everything, you know, fits where it's supposed to and you don't have a sleeve that's like too tight or something. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's so much that goes into it. And I, I feel like a lot of people maybe underestimate that. Um, <laughs> and like, even, even I certainly have, like, I'm so guilty of it where I'll be like, oh, I have a couple days off. Like I, I can write a pattern for a crop top in that amount of time. And it's like, no, a crop top takes me like two weeks to write. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it definitely takes a lot of time and yeah, it, it, it's a lot and it, it definitely is a learning curve as well. Yeah, um, I think the other thing is like, I because I don't really read that many patterns and I just make stuff up. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how that's going to translate, like if people are going to be able to follow my, how I'm doing it or I like trying to write it into a format that people are going to be able to like write as like a standardized format. I think I just, I think I may yeah. just need to look at more patterns and see how other people write them and see if mm -hmm. I can make my own but yeah yeah that actually um what you just touched on there with um kind of like referencing other people's patterns or like looking at kind of how other people write them I found that to be really helpful when I started um because like I said you know you have some patterns where you know people go into great detail about you know um you know, creating your stitches or, you know, how to size things properly. And then you also have my grandma's vintage check magazines that have like three words per step. And, you know, that's obviously, you know, works for some people, does not work for me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you've got 
other patterns that are kind of, you know, you've, you've got like diagrams. I don't, I believe there are knit diagrams, like knitting charts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you find, do you find those are kind of difficult to read as a knitter? I have like zero experience with that. So um, I've, I haven't had that much, like, I haven't really used them that much, but I've kind of seen, but I feel like, because I, I made a, a Tiger King sweater um, okay. during the first lockdown. Um, and I, I kind of want to turn that into like a grid pattern so people can knit up a jumper to whatever yeah. size, but then use that to either embroider kind of oh, okay. the pattern of the Tiger King or when they're knitting, they can use that as a guide so they can Got knit it. the jumper. But that's what one of the ones I kind of work, want to work on. But I feel like mm. Tiger King, that was like first <laughs> lockdown. People have kind of like moved on from Tiger King. I've got to wait until the next weird <laughs> true crime kind of documentary thing <laughs> yeah yeah um that's actually that's a really cool idea actually I, I love that um like uh like the color work charts and everything that would yeah. be so cool I've always wanted to try that but color color changing hurts my head <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's... little bit easier I think for well I find it a little bit easier for knitting like I've learned new techniques to try and help yeah. make sure that it stays together but I, I don't know how it works for crochet as such yeah crocheting is I mean the way that I learned at least it's like you have to switch your color before you like pull your yarn through the loops like I don't even know I don't do I, a lot yeah of I can color see your work. mind getting blown already just from the <laughs> yeah if I, if, I, if I do do color work it's like stripes and that's it and yeah, <laughs> yeah stripes are um, nice and easy to do nice and easy no no mental math no mind blown <laughs> none, none of you, that stuff do you listen to music or podcasts or watch tv when you're crocheting like what what's your kind I, of process when you yeah usually it's like it's like youtube i would say is like probably number one um and most of the time like when i'm watching youtube i'm kind of just listening to youtube yeah um and then music would probably be second. And then third is kind of just like whatever's on TV. Um, I actually don't watch a lot of TV. Um, no. Yeah, but uh, it's definitely like YouTube or, or music for sure. Trying to think of, there was what the other thing that I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about was your tattoos because you've oh. got <laughs> like an awesome kind of Japanese. And I think I just kind of noticed that you've got like a, like a Kind of looks a little bit like a Vulpix, like a nine tails fox on your arm. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a lot of people, a lot of people actually it's not quite ask if Vulpix. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people mm, ask if tails. it's like a, if it's like a Pokemon or if it's from like Naruto or something. And no, it's it's just a just a little Kitsune. Um, uh, I've always kind of loved um, mythology from, I guess like all all cultures. Um, mm -hmm. And and I knew for a fact, um, like I've known for a long, long time, um, even when I was a kid, I, I really wanted a fox tattoo. Um, and originally I thought it was gonna be like an American traditional fox um, or kind of maybe something a little more um, illustrative. But then I kind of started to read about um, uh, Japanese mythology and um, Irizumi, like the Japanese style of tattooing. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, and so I decided, I decided on getting a um, Japanese style sleeve. I find that I just find that they look very timeless. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Did you have like a, a full sleeve idea beforehand, no. or did you just <laughs> no? I did not. Just kind of get um, bits and then kind of get it full filled out as like a, a sleeve. Um. So I knew I knew I wanted a sleeve, and I knew I wanted the um, kitsune somewhere on my forearm. And that is literally all I had to go off of. Um, so my, my tattoo artist and I, um, we were talking about it and he was like, all right, well, we'll just, we'll, we'll get the, we'll get the kitsune on your arm. Uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. And he tattooed me and then uh, maybe like five or six months. No, it was more than that. It was almost a year later. I was like, okay, I have ideas now. Can we do the rest of it? Nice. Um, yeah, and so it, it was quite a long process because he ended up moving to Vancouver, which is, you know, all the way across 
all the way on the west coast of Canada. Um, yeah. So it was kind of hard because he would he'd come back to Toronto, but he'd only be here for like a day or two. So it'd be really long sessions at a time. Um, and then finally, I got it finished last year. Um, my sisters and I, we ended up taking a trip out to Vancouver. Uh, and I told him, I was like, hey, I'm in Vancouver. Let, let's just finish this up because it was probably like two or three years. Yeah, it was two years, two years in the making at this point. And I was like, I just want it done. I don't care how long you tattoo me for. I just, I need <laughs> this done. I'm tired of walking around with a half done sleeve. Yeah. And so we sat for probably like seven or eight hours to get it done. And nice, it was, it was hardcore. Brutal. It was very yeah. really brutal. Yeah, I can imagine. I think uh, I had a tattoo on my leg and I think that was five or six hours or something in the end. And oh my God. She had. She asked me a couple times whether I want some like numbing cream. Yeah. Um, and I was like, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And yeah. then I kind of looked down and was, we were like, we were most of the way there. There was still like a good hour or so left. And I was like, yeah, no, yeah. I, I need that cream. <laughs> like it <laughs> did was it on fire. Yeah, it really did. Like, cause it was um, on my leg. So there was bits around mm -hmm. near my knee and then kind of like, like almost my inner oh. thigh. And uh. oh, it was so sharp. Like, oh, uh, that sounds yeah that sounds yeah. insane but um yeah my girl yeah my girlfriend's got a back piece and like i know that oh, wow. like how long she's been sitting for and i was in my head i was like oh, i want i don't want to tap out I, i'm well i'm definitely not tapping out but i want to oh, like yeah. i don't want to use cream i want to <laughs> like at least go along as like as as far yeah. as like she's tough it like, out yeah no, I, I need some cream <laughs> i need some cream now so yeah, um, there's nothing wrong with that yeah, yeah. so uh yeah Oh, got... definitely. If if uh, if my sisters weren't there when I was getting my sleeve finished, um, I I definitely would have tapped out. Like there there was no way I would have finished it if I was on my own. But they were literally sitting there, like, oh my god, it was so embarrassing. They were literally like sitting there, like cheering me on, like, you can do it. Like, come on, there's only like a couple lines left. Yeah, two um, hours later, still going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it was brutal. So 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 brutal. Um, Sorry, I, I think I interrupted you there. That's fine. I was. Uh, have you got any more of, or is there many you need um, to sleeve? Uh, so I've got a couple more. Um, I have like a little crystal cluster on my sternum, uh, and then I've got uh, two hammers on. I think I can show you. Two hammers okay, cool. on my inner arm over here, and then I have uh, two pieces on my leg. The first one is a. Um, it's a jester sitting on a moon, which a lot of people think is like a joker, and then they think it's a joker tattoo. No, no, it's, hang on, I messed up my own tattoo. It is a joker tattoo, but they think it's like the joker, like right. Batman joker. From, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's actually not. It's a joker playing card tattoo, um, just not the card bit. It was just kind of the illustration of the joker. Mm -hmm. um, and I got that for my grandpa because him and I used to play cards all the time when we were kids. Or well, when cool. I was a kid, not when he was a kid, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that'd be a little weird. Um, so I kind of got that as like a little commemorative piece for him. And then my last tattoo is um, it's Navi from The Legend of Zelda, the little fairy. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's in a little bottle, and it's on my um, on my leg as well. Oh, that's kind of all my tattoos. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I would I would call myself relatively heavily tattooed. I mean, you got Not a full like... sleeve, so I I would say yeah. <laughs> even if yeah. you had a full sleeve, I think that's you're fairly tattooed. So <laughs> yeah, I think you have quite a bit as well, don't you? Uh, yeah. I don't ask me how many. Um, <laughs> I've got most of my kind of sleeve done. Um, unfortunately, a couple of years ago, we found uh, this amazing. Uh, actually Japanese tattooist um who oh, works down in Brighton which is like a three hour drive or so for us oh, okay. um so in the UK three hours is a long journey for you guys yeah <laughs> probably like a trip to the shops um, yeah <laughs> yeah um so I mean luckily I uh, my girlfriend got me a tattoo that's on the back of my arm which I can't show but um that was in February literally like a couple weeks before lockdown Oh wow. Um yeah, we were like we were hearing things and we were like, oh well, we'll still do the trip in February and then that's that's the last tattoo I've been. But I have been in talks with her of trying to get um like she's just gonna fill up my sleeve. Um Oh with, yeah. 
other bits, waves, winds. Oh, nice. Or, or could just kind of fill it up. So, so if people are watching this and wanting to get into crochet and want mm-hmm. to try out one of your patterns, what would be, what would you say that your best pattern is to try if you're like a complete beginner? I would say probably my time lapse top. Um, it's kind of this like high neck cropped halter and it's got sort of like this mesh detailing um down the center um it's it's pretty easy because it only uses um double crochet stitches and chains so really really easy um and you're only ever increasing so that's the only shaping you'll ever have to do with it um and it is it is fairly customizable as well um so if you find it's getting a little too wide you just stop increasing find it's a little too narrow you just add a couple more increases to it um the other one that i would say is pretty beginner friendly would be either a tie between my equinox tee or my homeward bound cardigan um those do require kind of a little bit more shaping um Mm -hmm. kind of different techniques in their own but they're pretty fairly straightforward i would say um and I guess the nice thing about it is they use kind of different stitches um, so there's a bit more texture to them so they kind of look they look a little fancier than like a super beginner friendly project but they're That's they're cool. quite easy to achieve I would say um, yeah awesome. I would say those would probably be my most beginner friendly projects and that was episode three um i've just got back from the walk um mocha had a great time running around i really hope that you all enjoyed the episode um it was really great uh, talking to becky and i had a lot of fun chatting to her and i hope that you all enjoyed it as well i, I got quite inspired by this episode and i am starting to make more notes on my work that i'm doing on my knitting and hopefully we'll bring out some patterns this year that's that's the plan but yeah uh, i would love to know Uh, what you thought about the episode don't forget to like and subscribe and all of those things you do with podcasts but yeah most importantly just if you could share it that'd be great because the more people that see my podcast i'm hoping the more people i can help uh here is a little bit of footage of a dog walk if you're watching this and if you are just listening to this check out the episode on youtube or instagram there'll be links down below and then just scroll to the end if you don't want to listen to the whole thing again check out our dog walk. I'll be back with another episode on Friday. See you in the next episode.